Hi, I'm Andrew. I live in Cottenham, which is north of Cambridge, which is possibly where the sea level rise coastline might come to. So I'm also in involved with Extinction Rebellion. I uh, went to some of the marches. where this is a very interesting a Banksy um, piece at the Marble Arch from moments of despair ends and the tactics begin. So we really have to get out of our apathy and look at seriously at what we need to do in order to address the climate change. And one of the positive aspects, we, we had a beach party where we put out the, the banner, Welcome to Cambridge Under the Sea, as a way of engaging you know, the public uh, in a non non-disruptive uh, manner, just inviting them in to join into basically what was a uh, beach party. Didn't have the sand or the beach, uh, fortunately the sea level hasn't arisen that far, but the idea was to get to, to raise awareness. I'm a geologist and also a map maker. Uh, I wrote a paper on the map stories, for example, to that effect. And I've been looking at climate-related issues uh, for quite a while. I uh, uncovered this article in, in Nature. Some of the sea level rise predictions have, have been way underestimated. That's what uh, made the scientific community realize that not only do we have to be, uh, look carefully at the base data, but we really have to get across to people the the issues, the social, economic, emotional, and other issues, because people react to emotions, not to science. So the main message is that the climate change is, is here, it is now, it's not somewhere in the future. We've had a couple of storms back to back in England, which were really uh, serious, which normally happen you know, once a year or once every five years. We had two in a month. This is not a theoretical exercise. So these are things that are happening uh, right now. So I did a, a fairly comprehensive review of scientific uh, consensus, where the climate may be heading, how to talk to people and, and avoid the fear and doubt that is uh, going around. In, you know, with 20 meters sea level rise, Cambridge at 13 meters elevation, there will be seven meters underwater, that's two bus heights, except that uh, 20 meters is not likely to happen, you know, in the next 500 years. So. That's, those are the kinds of things we're trying to, to uh, contradict. So let's start first with some baselines. And of course, it, these are a lot of uh, models that run around this. And by consensus, it's only a forward-looking idea. This doesn't mean it'll necessarily happen that way, but it gives us a good idea. So there are very, uh, really four steps uh, in 2050, 2100, 2200, and 2300. So in, in the mid-century, uh, the consensus says there would be a half meter uh, sea level rise in a moderate emission scenario, IPCC scenario, with a temperature increase that would be below uh, three degrees C, and that would be the next generation. Then by the end of the century, uh, we can uh, expect possibly a uh, two meter sea level rise in what is called the far tail scenario, meaning uh, mapping it out a little bit, Temperature increases um, could uh, increase above 3 degrees C. This is according to modeling that is out there. And that is uh, just for our own perspective, it's uh, two generations after that. Then in 2200, we can expect a six meter uh, sea level rise, which is an extreme uh, scenario where the temperature increases would be under nine degrees. But that essentially um, entails basically the Greenland ice sheet has melted. And even further out, the, the, what is called the beyond uh, is in 2300, where we can possibly look at 15 meter sea level rise uh, when all of the Antarctic ice has melted because temperatures um, have increased uh, nine de over 9 degrees C. The, we've benefited from having open data released by various government agencies that investigate a lot of the uh, climate uh, phenomena. It's allowed me to come up with a set of um, scenarios of that would allow us to look at what sea level rise might look at in the Fenlands of East India. 
and I just uh, took this information and after 30 years of doing this I was able to cr create some maps uh, that actually would make sense and help people uh, understand. All these, uh, these are regional maps of the uh, East Anglia uh, Femlands going from Cambridge at the bottom to Kings Lynn and the Walsh in, in, the, in the top. The big blue uh, splash in the middle is what is actually currently below sea level, but because of the drainage and uh, a lot of effort, all of that is of course not underwater, uh, but should any sea level rise happen and the, the drainage system uh, fail, then that would uh, very quickly be invaded by water. So we have an immediate danger of about 30% of the area being invaded. And you, you'll notice that, for example, the roads are very cleverly planned. They're along the high ground, which avoids a lot of these low stands, which would be occupied by the sea level rise as, as time goes by. And around that in red are the areas affected by a half meter sea level rise, which are not that significant yet compared to what is below sea level right now. But when we get to the two meter level, then we're getting into some significantly uh, more uh, real estate, uh, mainly of course towards the Walsh, but also down towards uh, Cambridge. And when we look at uh, the, the uh, furthest, the six meter sea level rise, then most of the coastal fenlands would be underwater. And the, here, for example, the, the, the sea level would come right into uh, Cambridge along the river would not inundate Cambridge as some people think but it would uh, come into Cambridge and we in the mapping community we jokingly talk about the Cambridge estuary being restored and the village of Cottenham where I am would be actually on a promontory would be kind of almost on a, like on a peninsula so that we call it Cottenham by the sea. Extinction Rebellion, rebel scientist group, and we're looking at where some of these risk zones be in, in our area. So you see this is Cambridge with uh, close in with the villages rimming north of Cambridge because that's where um, it's fairly generally understood that the, the Norfolk shoreline would be probably running along the villages uh, north of Cambridge. I'm actually part of, a, of an affinity group called um, village people because uh, this is where we think that a lot of these coastlines might be moving to. So as you can see there is the sub subsea area in blue which is not underwater it's just subsea. Within red the area that would be affected if the sea level rose half a meter but of course by then all of that subsea area would be uh, in an inundated. And with the two meter uh, sea level rise then you see uh, more being uh, flooded. Uh, sea level rise level is along which all the villages are in the, almost in a necklace formation because in the, in the Middle Ages the edge of the swamps that were basically most of the Fenlands mimic actually very much uh, the sea level rise. Well, to look at what the effect, which would be the affected parishes in the county. Uh, the black outline is the Cambridge uh, Peterborough um, combined authority and uh, in, in there in, in light are the actual parishes and the red dots show which other parish, parishes, civil parishes and the settlements basically agglomerations that would be affected by half meter uh, sea level rise by the mid-century and then in, uh, in yellow dots are the ones that would be affected by a two meter sea level rise but the, the most uh, prevalent are the, the lower levels as the, the number of villages that are affected is not um, kind of linear, it, it doesn't, the real estate that is affected by higher sea level rises is much larger than actually the number of settlements. But and as you can see, they're kind of gradually moving uh, from uh, north east, I guess, towards the, the southwest. Doing all these areas calculations regionally and locally and looking at the parishes together with some Wikipedia data about the population densities but we have the, the settlements, populations and areas, what is below currently sea level, what will be affected at a half meter, two meter and six meter. The important um, number is that uh, the affected settlements 
would actually rise from 25 to 40 percent. So that's a 15 percent increase uh, by the six meter sea level rise. Together also some number is not in only in terms of areas, but in terms of um, the populations, the number of uh, settlements and the populations that will be affected. And for the area, it's the same thing. We get a, basically, we get a significant uh, incre increase of affected populations and areas around 25% in East Anglia, which is basically, you know, considered by some to be the breadbasket of, of the UK. So those are not insignificant numbers. Remembering that these refer to really the far end scenarios like into 2200. So we're not going to lose a third of the real estate uh, just quite soon yet. But this, it gives us a very good framework and handle to work within to then have uh, positive and uh, educated uh, discussions and uh, inform the public as to what might happen with sea level rise in, uh, in East Anglia in the Fenlands. Thank you.